Hey, Natalie, how you doing? All right, thank you so much for kicking things off here. That's not always the easiest thing to do, so I appreciate you taking the plunge, so to speak. Okay, so I want to address your writing first. So this is not much difficult to get quite right. I'm glad uh, for trying the baseline, can't let, yeah, absolutely, yeah. The baseline is really the most important. Of course, then you place one letter to establish the, the, um, the X height. And then, of course, you need the cap B to establish the cap height. So that's great that you kind of were able to determine the pieces and parts in order to establish the baseline, mean line, and cap line um, to ensure consistency in the height levels of, of the letters. That's fantastic. Good stuff. I was glad to read about that, uh, your appreciation of the, of the baseline, mean line, cap line. Um, that points directly to letter mechanics. So that's great that you recognize that. Um, actually, it was a big guy made a bit more of a mess. I did have to use tracing paper because I have the wrong kind of marking paper. It's whatever paper you have is fine as long as you can accurately trace through it. In a perfect world, we all have a light table at home. I usually make a light table when I need to trace. I take a, one of the glass tables in my house and I just put a lamp right underneath it and it, it really works out well. Um, but, but I think I was able to use a ruler, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, of course. And I think one of the main things that, that we see with the ruler, so the, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that these are perfectly um, parallel. Okay, so right now the cap line is kind of heading up a little bit. So the distance between baseline and cap line here is less than it is here. Can, you can see how that's not leveled out right there. So that's really super important to establish a uh, level there. Um, same thing with the mean line and the, uh, the baseline as well. The other thing I, I think is that right now your, your letters have a slant to them. And I'm going to guess you're right-handed. Um, and typically what happens when we trace is right-handed people tend to shift their, their letters to the right, kind of an oblique or an italic. And we can see that right here. That's not perfectly parallel. So a lot of your uh, uh, vertical lines aren't, aren't true verticals. Um, they're a little bit on a diagonal. So you want to watch that. Okay, the next thing is we really want to take a look at, um, the, I, I think the letter shapes themselves. You've got them down pretty good. There's some inconsistencies over here. And a really good tip is to take a look at the negative space, the, this closed bowl right here, as well as this open counter right here in all of the A's. And just shoot for extreme consistency in that regard. Um, as far as crafts goes, I think you're pretty good in, in determining crafts. I think one really great tip is to just go through and take a sharp pencil and establish your, your uh, contour lines. Then go in with a softer lead and fill these in and get these as black as you possibly can because you want to uh, establish ample contrast. As far as spacing goes, I think you've done something very smart. What you did is you started by determining equal space between the letters, and that's a fantastic start. It's intuitive, right? So we're going to build on that, and we're going to start establishing letter spacing based on um, some of the rules of kerning. Now, one thing I want you to consider while moving forward is this, just the reason we, we space is because we don't want to create little groups, okay? So could you imagine if there was a space right here that was greater than the other spaces? This The, the reader would look at this and perceive it as bun Anna, and it would slow down the reading process, okay? So ample, I mean, I'm sorry, expeditious spacing allows us to read words as That's one word job. as opposed to two or three syllables, okay? So we look at yeah, good spacing, we, we recognize this word as banana, and not banana or ben Anna. Do you see what I'm saying? So a great rule of thumb is this, is, and when you work for your second submission, on Sunday, what I want you to do is I want you to establish um, this the, the, the spacing. So we can close down some of the spacing. And here's a general rule. Okay, the closest two letters should be R, A, between two curved. That's the closest. The next widest should be between a straight and a curve, and the widest should be between two straights. As we can see, here's two curves right here. Here's a straight and a curve. Here's a straight and a curve. And then here's two straights right here and right here. Okay, so again, just to summarize that, this is the widest space between two straights. This, the space between a straight and a curve is the next widest, and then the narrowest is between two curves, all right? All in a way that makes it appear that the space between letters are equal volume, okay? That's the key, so you wanna keep that in mind. Okay, so definitely great job. I'm glad you, you posted this other iteration. I think that's really good. And then we can definitely kind of see how the, the lines are, 
are perfectly parallel there. So I, I think it's a great start. So just a couple, a little touch up um, and really think about letter spacing and, and uh, that, the, that basic rules I gave you. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know. But uh, that's a great start. Looking forward to seeing your final iteration. Thank you very much, Natalie.